Greetings, fellow tarot travelers. Tripping through the tetrahedral triptych of cards I shall lay before you. I'm Tarot Torch. It is now time for us to address a very mystical country called Greece. Greece achieved independence from the Ottoman Empire in 1830. During the second half of the 19th century and first half of the 20th century, it gradually added neighboring islands and territories, mostly with Greek-speaking populations. In World War II, Greece was first invaded by Italy in 1940 and subsequently occupied by Germany between 1941 and 1944. Fighting endured in a protracted civil war between supporters of the king and other anti-communist and communist rebels. Following the latter's defeat in 1949, Greek joined NATO in 1952. In 1967, a group of military officers seized power, establishing a military dictatorship that suspended many political liberties and forced the king to flee the country. In 1974, following the collapse of the dictatorship, democratic elections and refer a referendum created a parliamentary republic and abolished the monarchy. Moving forward in 1981, Greece joined the EC, now called the EU. It became the 12th member of the European Economic and Monetary Union in 2001. Greece has suffered a severe economic crisis since late 2009 due to nearly a decade of chronic overspending and structural rigidities. Beginning in 2010, Greece entered three bailout agreements with the European Commission, the European Central Bank, and the IMF, and the third in 2015 with the European Stability Mechanism worth about uh, $300 billion. The Greek government formally exited the third bailout in August 2018. Greece's government, a coalition of radical left-wing movement and nationalist far-right wing party in power since 2015, celebrated the end of the country's third bailout agreement last August as a return to normalcy. But Greece is a long way from normalcy. Recovery will take major new investments, political stability, and further reforms to the public administration. Not only is the public debt of Greece greater than it was in 2009, citizens' incomes have been slashed, their assets devalued, their property lost, and their debts multiplied. Greece's decade-long economic crisis has taken a heavy toll. Hundreds of thousands of jobs were lost, incomes were slashed, and taxes were raised. As of January 2019, Greece had only repaid 41.6 billion euros of the 320 billion it owes. It has scheduled debt payments beyond 2060. As poverty has deepened, unemployment has hit an unprecedented 18%, with over 42% affecting the 25 to 40 age group. Crime has skyrocketed in a country heading for a fifth straight year of recession. Greece's social fabric is fraying in ways once unthinkable. With the homeless now exceeding 20,000 people in central Athens alone, funding cuts disproportionately affecting welfare services and drug use are on the rise. The economic crisis has changed increasingly into a crisis of mental health problems, with depression, neurosis, cases of self-harm, and suicide surging. Psychiatrists have reported a 30% increase in demand for their services over the past year, with most patients citing anxiety and depression brought on by financial fears for the decision to seek help. Will Greece pay its debt? Will the Greek economy improve? Is this debt crisis allowing foreign investors to buy Greek real estate, even ancient ruins, cheaply? 
Will Greece's debt and economic crisis help to bring down the EU? Will Greece leave the EU? Will Greece turn into a militarized junta state to prevent crime and to feed and employ its people within a huge military framework which will serve as a socialist state? If Greece militarizes, will it earn money or credit for protecting EU interests to pay off its debt? Well, you know, these are very big questions and we simply don't have the answers to these questions. And when there are questions for which we have no answers, it's time to check the tarot cards. They may not have the answers we want, but they will provide us with interesting counsel nonetheless. The tarot cards always have something very interesting to say. Now today I'm going to be working with these decks, the Terocci di Bacchus. Now this particular Del Negro deck is, well, a little bit on the alcoholic side. In fact, it's more about consuming alcohol than it is about Bacchus, the secret mysteries of Greece, or anything Greek in particular. But we're only going to draw one card from this deck because of its enormously huge size. And the other deck that I have chosen to work with is likewise a Bacchus type deck. It is the Terocho de Besançon by Il Managello from Milan, Italy. And this deck is very interesting. It was produced at a time when people were tired of tarot decks always referring to Catholic images. And so in this deck, you will find references with the emperor and empress, I believe it is, or maybe it's the Pope and the Popus. We'll see if we turn those cards to Roman and Greek gods. So let's see what the cards hold for us in store today. We'll start by shuffling the deck. And once again, this deck is so huge. Don't expect miracles with the shuffling. It's so big, I'm afraid I'm going to hit the camera. Okay, there's a few shuffles to provide legitimacy. And here with this deck, which is a little bit smaller, I can more easily shuffle and not bump into things. In fact, I've been shuffling this one kind of a lot before the program because we want to get this all fair and square. So I'll put the cards off to the side, but still in view, so everybody can tell that I'm dealing from the top of the deck. And we will then have the maximum space we need to do our work. And let's begin with the Del Negro deck. And the card we have about Greece is the Four of Coins. Well, the Four of Coins is a very interesting card. And it represents different things in different decks. And typically in the Rider Waite Smith system, the Four of Coins is all about um, greed and hanging on to money and resources as though it's a power base and not being able to really let go and invest and use the money in propitious manners. Then in the uh, Marseille deck, the Four of Coins represents stability. That means you have a firm, stable base of money from which you can operate your life. But it appears that in the Bacchus deck, we're looking at a connoisseur who has a collection of art. And you know, in a way, that does relate very much to Greece. Greece is a very rich culture with priceless art practically on every street corner. I mean, how much would you charge for the Pantheon? And some of the marble statues, oh my gosh, it may not have cash but it is a connoisseur country of art and beauty. Even just an ocean view from the islands is worth millions and millions of dollars. And you don't need to rape the land and build houses on every square inch to see the view. Really, just standing there is often enough and makes it even more of a valuable experience. Now with the Besson, we have the Chevalier, Chevalier de Coupe, the Knight of Cups. This is a Swiss deck, and it is a deck from the year... Let me see if the year is on the box. You know, they didn't put the year on the box. I'm sure it's inside somewhere. But it is a later format of the uh, Marseille-type uh, tarot. And so the word Chevalier is used, which represents uh, a knight. In earlier editions, it's Cavalier, which is the horseman. And the next card is the Three of Coins. Now, the 
what this configuration speaks of is that in the past, Greece has been drunk with power. It has its art, its language, its beauty, its poetry, its philosophers, its statues, its form of government. And it's been this like ebulently rich knight carrying a cup. He's not carrying a sword or a wand. He's carrying sacramental wine, perhaps, but wine nonetheless. And so Greece has been on a mission to provide the world with Socrates and Aristotle and, and Pythagoras and the Elgin marbles and all kinds of things that Greece has participated in. And here we have a very wealthy country that's been running around, spending money, being rich, and not really paying the bills. And now, during their time of austerity, they are connoisseurs of this great wealth that is surrounding them. Most Greek citizens know everything about every inch of their land and all the ancient ruins. And they do have great value in their land. I mean, everybody would love to live in Greece, let's face it. Beautiful weather, beautiful views. It couldn't be more lovely there. But if the Japanese buy out Greece and the B British buy out Greece and the Belgians buy out Greece and the New Yorkers buy out Greece, well, we're going to turn Greece into Miami or even worse, Hong Kong. And then it's no longer Greece. It's no longer the place you want to be. It's just a huge city in the middle of the ocean. So this has to do with understanding the value of their civilization and, and holding on to that and not wholesaling out their country. And that's what they're doing. And that's why they're suffering through the austerity. They don't want to shortchange future generations and sell out their country to the bidders for whom it would be pennies on the dollar. And in the future, what we see here, and this is what I was talking about with the military junta, the Greek people need to come up with a product, a method of money making to pay off for their debt. Now, there are some wonderful ideas of how to transform a civilization from a debt-ridden civilization into a money-making civilization. There's an individual who works with um, Adam Stones in South Africa, huge stone circles, who's come up with a marvelous model I think everybody should become aware of on how to develop economies in regions where there is a great deal of debt. And he has a, a system and an idea that I think is personally brilliant. The other idea is, of course, investing in militarism, which nobody wants to do and turn the whole Greek civilization into a killing army. But on the other hand, the EU is kind of defenseless right now. And, you know, with Russia in the north, the Arab uh, Muslim springs that have erupted into wars that have transgressed political boundaries to the east, sharing an island with Turkey, a known enemy, to the south, having more Arab Muslim countries that would like to invade. You know, Greece is in a position very similar to Israel. And, you know, the idea of having a militarized country where that's the form of socialism, like in Israel, everybody does time in the military. And the whole country helps to provide a military budget. It's a product they can sell. It's a product Europe needs. It's something the EU could prosper from, a strong militarized country that will do the guarding of the gates. So we see here that Greece is not lost. Greece is not going to be destroyed. It's not going to be exploited. They're holding on to their resources. They overspent in the past, but they know their value. They're not going to give in so easily and fast to trendy spenders who can, you know, write a check and destroy their country. And they will come up with a method. You know, this method of the individual in South Africa is very simple. You go to a town, find out what the people in the town do. Are they woodworkers? Are they stone workers? Are they shoemakers? And you make a list of everybody in the town, in the city, as to what their occupation is, what they're, what they're good at doing. And then from that accumulated list, you derive a product that would incorporate 
the majority of the citizens. And if everybody in the city works three hours a day, only three hours a day, to make this product work with city government backing, the amount of money that can be made in a situation like that is profound. It is unbelievable. It, eventually, the whole city will quit their regular jobs and work only in this one job because the amount of money is so great. So there are methods. There are methods for making money. And this is what Greece is going through, is some method. Now, I'd like to know more about this production. That's what the Three of Coins is, is having a product for sale. And we have the Two of Cups. Well, that would be the tourism industry right there, because the Two of Cups is a lot about love. It's marriage and partnership. Actually, you know, a marriage industry isn't a bad idea. If Greece would simply package itself as the marriage destination of the world and put Las Vegas, Nevada out of business, you might find that to be a huge moneymaker to help employ people and settle their debt. People would love to get married in the Greek ruins. And beneath it is the Eight of Swords. And the Eight of Swords is about protecting something so precious. It's, it's like having, uh, uh, you know, gold and diamonds and jewels or children. Something, or in the Greek case, the ancient ruins and the wisdom of their ancient civilization. That you have something so precious to protect. And the Two of Cups can also represent a partnership. You know, Greece could go into partnership with the EU as a military provider, but it could also go into partnership with Bollywood or Hollywood and become a place where multiple scripts can be written. A marriage industry can format because it's a partnership card. There's a lot that can be done to protect the valuable assets of Greece and allow production to occur so that they can pay off their debt and preserve their antiquities, their culture, and their contribution to the earth. It wasn't ferociously wrong what happened in the past. They were just enjoying the wonder of life and overspent. I think we've all had moments like that. But now it's time for reality and it's time for Greece to earn some money. Austerity isn't the answer. Austerity is a method of keeping things going in the right direction. But what the cards are saying is a product, an economic product needs to come forward to actually make prosperity work. And I think redesignating the economy so that we literally get cities developing products based on what the people are good at doing. Producing a strong military, producing art schools, producing movies, producing sculpture schools, producing a marriage industry through tourism and protecting Greek values and civilization, culture and language, that this is what needs to be done. It's not enough just to stand still and take it with all the abuses of austerity. That's not going to do it. Money has to be made. The government needs to work with the people, not with private industry, but with the people and what the people can do and what the people have to offer. And I have found Greek people to be great artisans, great artists, great thinkers. They have a lot to contribute to the world. It's just a matter of having them come together with the assistance of a governmental structure to make products that sell globally. That's all. The more global products they have, the more able they are to pay off their bills and create prosperity for their people.